A cordial greeting, today is Friday, June 16, 2023. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In this video, I will provide an update on the forecast for what may possibly be the next cyclone of the 2023 hurricane season in the Atlantic region, which is associated with a strong tropical wave currently located south of the Cape Verde Islands. Since the beginning of the week, we have been monitoring this area because the tropical wave was expected to encounter favorable conditions for development, and the National Hurricane Center continues to increase the probability of development over the next seven days as it moves west-northwest over unusually warm waters in the tropical Atlantic. The most important thing we will be discussing in this video is that currently there are two scenarios. The first is that this system remains slightly weaker than anticipated and could approach the northeast of the Caribbean by the end of next week. The other scenario is a system that strengthens more than anticipated and could take a trajectory more towards the northwest, away from the Caribbean region. However, please remember that it is still quite far away and it will take more than seven days to reach this area. Therefore, many changes in the forecasts can occur, which is why we will remain vigilant during the weekend to see how this disturbance evolves. It is also important to mention that when these disturbances are in the development process and until we have the formation of a well-defined circulation center, the models and forecasts can vary significantly. But today, at least, we have seen a tendency to show a stronger system than anticipated, which would move this potential cyclone away from the Caribbean region. However, there is still uncertainty, so here at Hurricane Info, we will remain attentive to keep you informed. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, the National Hurricane Center continues to increase the chances of cyclonic development. As of 2 p.m. today, the probability of a tropical depression forming in the tropical Atlantic over the next seven days has increased to 60%, according to the latest model runs. Due to the strong support this disturbance has in becoming a tropical cyclone, the chances of development will likely continue to increase throughout the night. For example, the ensemble members of the European model now have an 85% to 95% probability of a third tropical depression forming within the next 48 to 96 hours, midway between the Caribbean and Africa. Confidence is increasing that this disturbance will possibly become tropical depression number three and then tropical storm bread. I also wanted to mention that within the next 24 hours, it is very likely that the National Hurricane Center will designate this area as Invest 92 liters, and we will start seeing specialized forecasts for its track and intensity. Now let's talk about the forecasts from the global models. Let's start with the GFS model in its latest run. You can see that as early as Saturday night or Sunday, it already has a tropical depression. This model is quite aggressive in developing this tropical wave into the third cyclone of the season. Notice that it maintains a trajectory mainly towards the west-northwest at least until next Wednesday, but the big change today is that the GFS model and other models show a much stronger disturbance. In this case, it has a strong tropical storm or even a Category 1 hurricane as it moves northeast of the Caribbean. Another very important change and a clear trend we have seen in the last 24 hours is that a stronger cyclone would tend to move more towards the north-northwest, away from the Caribbean region. We continue to observe, and hopefully, this trend continues. Remember that yesterday it was mentioned that it could pass a bit closer to the Caribbean, but there have been two important changes. First, a stronger system with better chances of moving northward, and secondly, the models are showing that a trough system could move in the waters of the North Atlantic during the beginning of next week and help the future tropical storm Brett take a more northwest and northward turn. In fact, notice that on Tuesday, the strong high-pressure system in the Atlantic will continue, which will help maintain a mostly west-northwest trajectory. But then from Wednesday onwards, you can see the development of a trough system that allows this disturbance to take a more northwest and northward turn, as shown in this forecast. Let's hope that this trend continues, and it will be very important to see if this strong trough system develops in the North Atlantic and protects us in the Caribbean region. We also have the European model with a fairly similar forecast. However, unlike the GFS model, it takes a bit longer to strengthen this tropical wave and shows that the development of a tropical depression may not occur until Monday or Tuesday. A weaker system gives it a chance to travel a bit further west. But starting on Tuesday, you can see that conditions could lead to a faster strengthening than we had anticipated, which would help it move more northwest and pass northeast of the Caribbean, but according to the European model, at a short distance. Therefore, we must remain vigilant for changes in the coming days. However, compared to yesterday, we do see a trend of this future cyclone passing northeast of the Caribbean. But it's important to note that long-term forecasts can have a significant margin of error, and we still need to continue monitoring, especially in Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and the islands north of the Lesser Antilles. Just like the GFS model, the European model also has a high-pressure system in place over the next few days that will help this tropical wave and future tropical depression number 3 move mostly towards the west-northwest. Then, 
by Wednesday, it develops a trough system in the North Atlantic, weakens the high-pressure system, and helps it take a more west-northwest turn. In fact, you can see that in about nine days, there is a trough system in the central North Atlantic, and our system takes a trajectory towards the northwest and then north, passing just northeast of the Caribbean without direct effects. We have to wait and see what happens, but remember that beyond five days, this forecast can undergo significant changes. The United Kingdom's model, the UK MET, maintains this system as weaker and therefore on a trajectory somewhat closer to the Caribbean. However, under this scenario, it would arrive as a weaker system that shouldn't cause major problems in our region. Lastly, the German model shows a forecast very similar to the GFS and European models, strengthening this disturbance starting next Wednesday in a slightly faster manner, possibly becoming a strong tropical storm or hurricane moving northwest, far from the Caribbean. In general, the most important thing is to observe several factors. First, how quickly this tropical wave strengthens and develops into a tropical depression. The later it happens, the more opportunities it will have to travel further west. However, if it happens faster, there are more chances for it to move northwest, away from the Caribbean. The second very important factor we will be observing is whether it starts to strengthen at a faster pace starting Tuesday, helping it gain latitude. We will also be monitoring if that low-pressure system or trough finally establishes itself near Bermuda and helps divert this disturbance towards the northeast of the region. These two scenarios are clearly seen in the ensemble members of the European model, where the majority of them develop a strong tropical storm or Category 1 hurricane and keep the system far away from the Caribbean. However, the members that have a weaker disturbance or weak to moderate tropical storm move it over the northeastern region of the Caribbean. Based on these two scenarios today, there are greater probabilities of it strengthening and moving away from the Caribbean, but we cannot rule out the possibility of it remaining weaker and passing closer. Therefore, we will continue to pay attention to this forecast. Although I must admit that today's trends are favorable for the Caribbean, also compare the trackings of the ensemble members of the GFS model, which show in blue and red a stronger cyclone taking a more northern trajectory. But if it remains weak as a weak or moderate tropical storm, it could move more westward. We will continue with this uncertainty because the disturbance will move very slowly over the next few days and it is far from reaching this area. Well, that's all for tonight's update. Stay tuned to Hurricane Info to stay informed during the coming days, and let's remain calm as we will have many days to observe its evolution. I also invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are watching me on YouTube. Click on the red button below the video that says subscribe, and then click on the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload new content. I hope you all have an excellent weekend. Until tomorrow with a new update on this forecast, goodbye.